All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakah Kadash. I want to say double honors to the elders and apostles, chiefly of Great Millstone, who I'm learning this truth from. Peace and salutations also to the brothers and the Akimon down who are pushing this truth out in all sincerity, diligently doing the work of the Lord. And I also want to say Shalom to the hopeful elect, uh, the Israelites scattered abroad, the confusion of face Israelites, and the, also the women and children who may be listening. Shalom. So today, um, I just want to do a, a video relating to prophecies. Um, one of the scriptures that I want to get into um, off the top uh, is in the book of Ezekiel. Uh, so we're going to go to Ezekiel um, chapter uh, 3 verse 17. And it reads, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So this is what the Israelites, uh, the ones that have woken up to the truth, um, who are continuously learning as they go. Um, this is what we're called to do. We're called to be watchmen. It's like we stand upon the walls. When you see danger coming, like an approaching army or, or, you know, that's just to give an example. We're supposed to cry aloud and we're supposed to let everybody know what's coming so that they may prepare um, and, and get themselves ready. Uh, so I'm going to continue, uh, continue reading. And it says, uh, when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die and thou givest him not warning nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life. So that's what we're doing. We're out here trying to save your life or you save your soul. It's like uh, continuing on. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So if I'm not out here giving you the warning, as I've been called to do, then your blood is on my hands because I didn't give you that warning. So by me giving you the warning, I'm going to continue reading actually in verse 19. It says, yet if thou warn the wicked... And he turned not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way. He shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So if I give you the warning and you don't take it, that's fine. You don't have to take it. You know, you don't have to follow along. You don't have to do anything. But if I say it and you don't listen, then that's fine. You'll still die. But the blood ain't going to be on my hands. I'm not going to be the one responsible for that. So, as I say, uh, this is just a warning. Uh, we're getting closer to the times and things are starting to really heat up in the, in the earth. You know, 2020 has been a rough year. I can only imagine 2021 ain't going to be any better. So, what I really wanted to get into was the, uh, the famines. Because uh, that's definitely on the horizon. You know, um... My last video I posted, I didn't do any commentary, but uh, I basically showed you a news report of um, the trucks that are stuck at the uh, the border crossing, you know, from uh, from the channel to to go back and forth to mainland Europe, uh, i.e. through the France uh, through France. Um, but uh, there's like 20 mile queues of of um, trucks sitting waiting through on customs to, to get through because of this Brexit thing. And the Lord's time is perfect. Most High's timing is perfect, you know. All this this coincided, you know, and it all came together at the last and, and now, you know, judgment is about to start unfolding. All right. So uh, I'm gonna get uh pull a scripture before I show you this video. Um and I'm gonna go to no actually what I'll do is I'll I'll pull the video first and then I'll um I'll show you the uh, the scripture. Uh, so this video here is titled Lorry Drivers Clash with Police as they try to enter the port of Dover in Kent. So that's a, a main port where a lot of the uh, the trucks come through, right? So <laughs> So I'm going to stop it just here. And as you can see, it says France has lifted the travel ban, but said 
those seeking to cross into the country it's your decision. from the UK must have a negative corona, uh, Crown Royal uh, result, you know. So with the uh, with the fact that they're all sat here, like they they're pretty much prisoners in our country now. So they can't cross unless they get a negative result. You know, the ban has been lifted. However, there's restrictions. So what do you think is going to happen when, like, people that ain't in the country, you know, people that ain't in, uh, that haven't driven to the UK with with their their goods from mainland Europe, they're going to think, well, if I go over to to England, you know, before this this said holiday Christmas, they're not going to be able to get back. Unless they get a, a coronavirus test, you know, the rules keep changing. So these these drivers of these trucks are going to refuse to drive here. You know, it's this a logical thing. If you was in a truck, knowing that the country you drive to, you potentially won't be able to get back out of that country. You know what I mean? And and the rules could change. They could quarantine you for two weeks. These These guys have no idea what's going on. They could be stuck here for the next two weeks. You know, so if some of them have been in contact with, you know, with someone that's contracted uh, Crown Royal, you know, 19, then, you know what I mean? They ain't going anywhere. But I'll continue the video. Obviously, they've got these... Uh, these results that can come in about half an hour, 30 minutes. But who's to say that the, you know, the test, um, there isn't something wrong with, with that and, and the result is off or something like that. You never know, you know, it, it could be nothing, but this is something that we have to, to sound the alarm about. We have to give you that warning because these things are, are happening. As you can see, they're, un they're unfolding in front of your very eyes. Do you see that? It's like it. I'm just gonna wind it back. Sorry to keep uh, pausing it and uh, winding it back. Look, increasing the driving limit of nine hours to eleven. So the food that's in the back of those trucks. You know, already they're on a time limit before they, they start going off and start going bad. You know, nine hours and then you've got to wait another three hours, you know, and then they've got to go through the processing and then to the uh, the local markets. You know, everything's just, everything's just starting to crumble. You take your money and stay here and just, you know, go, go, go. Maybe come in this, this. go. You see, luckier. So as you can see, uh, I accidentally stopped the video. But as you can see from the uh, the video I just played, a lot of those drivers are angry. They're angry. They're they're scuffling with with police. And this goes into my my next scripture that I want to get. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter six, verse twenty-two. Okay. So it says, uh, and suddenly shall the sown places appear unsown. The full storehouses shall suddenly be found empty. And that's your, your supermarkets. That will be your, your supermarkets, your markets, anywhere that deals with like goods that are transported through these these trading routes. You know, these these uh, routes that these truck drivers uh, go through, you know. Um, verse 23, and the trumpet shall give a sound, which when every man heareth, they shall suddenly uh, they shall be suddenly afraid, Salakia. So, you know, that trumpet sound is not like a, an official trumpet, like you just hear, it's more like you're starting to realize, like that light bulb's just popped up in your head that a lot of this stuff is actually happening. And a lot of people are going to be afraid with what's, what's happening. You're going to shortly see people flock into the supermarkets to, 
just like they did with the uh, the first lockdown when they were going crazy for toilet paper. But now they're going to be going crazy for whatever's remaining on the shelves, pretty much. Okay, and then verse 24 it says, At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. So your, your best mate's going to be fighting against you. You know what I mean? Like, like you got to picture this stuff, right? And it says, uh, And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs and fountains shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. Okay, so verse 25, uh, I think I'm going to drop down. It's uh, luck here. I think that's that's just the point on that. Yeah, I got the point. Yeah. Okay. So the next uh, scripture that I want to sort of pull up, uh, going into your your neighbors and your or your friends fighting against each other, is still in the book of Second Ezra. But I'm going to jump down to chapter fifteen, right? Uh, and I'm going to start at verse. Hmm. Let's have a look. I'm going to start at verse 3. So fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So the word incredulity means um, unbelief, basically. And you can, you can look that up here. Incredulity uh, is the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. So they just don't believe in what I'm what we're bringing out you know they they scoff against it okay and it says for all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness so yeah just because they don't believe in it doesn't mean it ain't true okay verse five behold saith the lord i will bring plagues upon the world the sword which the sword isn't your um sword in in shield it's the modern day gun that that would be the modern day sword would be the gun so the gun, famine, death, and destruction. And the reason all this stuff is, is transpiring is, uh, well, I'm going to keep reading. So verse 6, For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. So they've just been continually doing wickedness in this earth. Continually. Like everywhere you look, it's just wickedness. You know? Verse 7, therefore, saith the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profane, profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and the righteous or the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me and the souls of the just complain continually. And that's the Israelites waking up. We're, we're sick and tired of this world. You know, we're sick and tired of how it's managed. We're sick of all the evil and the wickedness that's going on. And we're just out here, you know, trying to explain to people um, what's going on. And, and it seems like nobody cares. So that's fine. I mean, you don't have to care. But this is what we're continually crying out to the Lord about. Okay. So the next scripture that I'm going to jump into... Uh, actually, I'm going to jump, drop down to verse 15. So it says, For the sword and their destruction draweth nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another with swords in their hands. For there shall be sedition among men, and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. So if you look at how... You know, the government's handling all this stuff. People are getting sick. You've seen a lot of protests and people rising up and, and all this. This is what these scriptures are going into. Verse 17. A man shall desire to go into a city and shall not be able. What does that sound like? Tier 4 lockdown? Um, verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. Verse 19, a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, 
but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of the bread and for great tribulation. You see? Great tribulation. You know, these are all uh, things that are uh, spiraling out of control and it's it's of the most high. It's the most high's grand design. You know, we need a reset. This world is wicked. Okay. So what my message is, is to give you that warning to let you know that these things are coming to pass so you can see it and matching it up with scriptures as well. So you see that we ain't just talking out the side of our neck. But the last scripture I want to pull uh, is in the book of Luke. Um, it's like, yeah, I'm going to go to Luke 21. And I'm going to go to verse 28. And it says, and when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. So our redemption draweth nigh. If you're an Israelite, my advice is to repent, to fast, to pray, and also to have faith and believe that the Lord will deliver you from, from you know, the, uh, the, the coming judgments, you know. You've got to keep the commandments. That's, that's also a, a big thing as well. You can't just believe that the Lord's going to, gonna save you while you're eating a pork sandwich you know what i mean like you gotta you gotta dive into the law and and figure out what what uh requirements the lord wants in order to for you to have the slightest chance of being saved you know what i mean or, or being redeemed you know my myself included i'm not putting myself in that number to say that oh yeah i'm guaranteed you know i'm gonna get it but i'm, I'm doing what i can i'm here giving this word you know, to the best of my ability, you know, whether they hear or forbear, you know, but I'm, I'm doing everything um, that I can to make my calling to election short, roughly paraphrasing that scripture. But um, with that, I hope this was edifying to whoever may have received it. Um, and with that, I want to give all honor, glory and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekha Shalom.